call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order to let the record show a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of the meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is 6.07. If you would uh, join me in standing as Mr. Hubert leads us in the invocation and Mrs. Powell leads us in the pledges. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day and this opportunity we have to come here to, to discuss the, the business of Conroe Independent School District. We are grateful for the opportunity we have to serve uh, this school district, and we are grateful for uh, the building that we have here. We ask you to be with those this, this day in this room, that we may conduct ourselves in an orderly manner and be able to, to accomplish uh, our, our stated goals. We also ask you to be with those who are with the families that are mourning the loss of, of the young student who lost her life earlier this, this week, this, uh, this month, that peace and harmony will come to that family. And we pray for all of those others who may be struggling with the same issues, that they may find hope and they may find a way out. And we pray for this country and the leaders that lead it. And we say these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the city of Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much, Mr. Hubert, Mrs. Powell. Uh, Item 2A, uh, Special District Recognition 2015 District Facilities Planning Committee, Dr. Stockton. All right, I'll ask Dr. Hines to come and make that presentation. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Stockton. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to take this opportunity to provide uh, special recognition to the 2015 District Facilities Planning Committee. <clears throat> the 2015 District Facilities Planning Committee comprised of 23 community members from all geographic areas of the district. They worked with district personnel and various consultants to review the current and future needs of the Conroe Independent School District. The Facilities Planning Committee was charged with making a recommendation to the Board of Trustees to address those needs while impacting the tax rate as minimally as possible. After meeting over a three-month period, the Facilities Planning Committee made their recommendation to the Board of Trustees at the June 16, 2015 meeting. And that recommendation became the blueprint for what was to become the 2015 uh, Conroe Independent School District bond referendum that passed with an overwhelming 68.95% of the votes on November the 3rd, 2015. So I will call out those members and we're gonna ask that you come up to be recognized and then if you would stay up until everybody is up at the front. Um, and I'm gonna call everybody's name even if I don't know if everybody made it tonight. Uh, first, Cody Bartlett. Ted Bell. Belton Bird. Brad Chapel. Brad Chapel. Okay. Uh, Ted Bell. <laughs> Jeff Clark. Paul Cody. Brian Fowler. Linda Odell.
Rick Hatcher. Frank Ildebrando. Stacy Jan. Rob Coster. Kim Lejeune. David Matos. Tammy McCutcheon, Joe Michaels, Scott Moore, Chad Patterson, Linda Sasser. <laughs> Danielle Shiner. Gil Staley. <clears throat> Dexter Upshaw. George Wagoner. I will be brief. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Conroe ISD, uh, your service to our district is uh, uh, overwhelming. Uh, the wisdom that you provide, the sage advice that you provide as a team for our, our students uh, is just fantastic. And uh, generations will be rewarded because of the service that you put in. And I just want to say on behalf of the board, we thank you deeply. Thanks. They're going to do the, they're going to go around and we're going to circle around to do the handshakes of all the board members. We're going to make the train here. I should have thanks for thanks. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's easy. Are y'all sure y'all don't want to stay for the whole meeting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this one's or twice. Okay. Okay, item 2B, special district recognition 2015 UIL Class 6A, Boys Cross Country 
state champions, the Woodlands High School. Dr. Stockton. I'd like to invite the principal, Mr. Greg Colson, to come make that presentation. Mr. Colson. Mr. Husband, this is Dr. Stockton, members of the board. It's an honor to be here tonight to recognize a very special group of young men. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the opportunities that you provide for our students through extracurricular programs, whether it be athletics, fine arts, uh, CTE programs. Uh, all those extracurricular programs are a vital part of the total high school experience uh, that, that so benefit our students. Um, these guys are truly incredible, and I'd like to call on Coach Juris Green to introduce, introduce the hardest working guys at the Woodlands High School. Well, good evening, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. This is um, one of the highlights of my year. Uh, this never gets old. I love coming to see you guys. Uh, a year ago, our team, we had some big expectations put on our shoulders when we were runners up in the state cross country championships. We were named the number one returning team in the state of Texas and also the number five team in the United States. Fast forward to the end of the track season, we were also named the number one 1600 meter program in the United States when six of these young men ran that distance between four, four minutes and 15 seconds and four minutes and 20 seconds. By the end of the, this cross country season, in the 40 years of our school, we have won 36 district titles, 31 regional titles, and this year also our 18th state title. Awesome. And from, yes. It's a, it's a wonderful story and one that I, I love to relive, but it actually gets better. Uh, our top five finishers at the state meet were in the top 11 places. We had the individual runner-up in junior Noah Wells, and finally, to put the cherry on the cake, we had the individual state champion in Daniel Golden. Uh, these guys are the greatest Highlander cross-country team ever to wear our colors, red and green. And it's been such a pleasure uh, to be a part of it all. And with your permission, I would like to introduce them. Absolutely. Uh, starting over here, uh, the far left, uh, Matt, Matt McClellan. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> Michael Butero. M Michael Butero. Noah Wells, Nick Hawley, William Hunsdale, Dan Golden, Nico Enox, Nathan Musial. Davin Martinez, Daniel Baker, Matt Henderson, and Gavin Hoffpar. And last but not least, my excellent assistant coach, Chris Bales. I'm sorry, I'm still stunned by the four minute, whatever. <laughs> um, that's just incredible. You guys are an amazing representation of everything that embodies the Highlander spirit. And I am so grateful to how you represent us, not even just in this district, but now state, national, the recognition that you get is absolutely amazing. Thank you for continuing to exceed all expectations and do the job that you have set for yourselves. We have a plaque that we want to present y'all. Thank you very much.
Before we let him get all too far, uh, let's just go ahead with item uh, 2C, Special District Recognition 2015, Class 6A Boys Cross Country State Champion, Daniel Golden. Uh, Coach Green, you want to come back to the podium? <laughs> I, tried, I tried to save you the distance. But, anyway. And by the way, I think, I think some of us know the story, but uh, all 18 championships have been won by a coach by the last name of Green. Yes, sir. That's right. Yeah. Five of them have been run on by Green Sons, three for my brother and myself for two. So we're we're all up in that program. Wow. Oh, sure. Right. <laughs> I'm sure. Right. right. Yeah. Go to me. <laughs> well done. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yes. Well, uh, that's one well, way of saying it. I want to explain. There's some people that didn't understand a word that just happened. <laughs> uh, Danny Green, your father, mm -hmm. was the original coach and won how many state championships? Uh, before he left, 15. 15, and then you've won three since yes. you've taken over. So yes. That, that's just an incredible story in itself. Wow. Right. Yes. Well, to speak uh, about Dan Golden, you know, every big movement requires a catalyst. And um, a year ago, well, actually preseason, just in the summer, um, Daniel was preseason ranked number 29 in the state of Texas. And when he saw that preseason ranking, it infuriated him. And some people, <laughs> they, they take that anger and go different ways with it. But for him, it made him incredibly <clears throat> motivated. And uh, he just started on a journey, and it just never slowed down. He was only defeated by the defending state champion, uh, David Strom from Caldwell Heritage at Nike South Art, the meet that we host, um, and Adam Bro from College Park at the district meets, both very high quality runners um, before Daniel won the individual regional title and the state title and leading this team to one of the greatest performances or the greatest performance by a, a Texas uh, boys cross country uh, team. Um, but Daniel was and is uh, one of the best uh, spokesmen, uh, poster childs of our program, because he, I mean, I, I, just this past week we had our cross country banquet, um, and I looked up his freshman results. As a freshman, he was 12th or 13th place in the district championships, and he was our number seven or eight runner on the freshman team. And today, he's a 415, 916 mile or two miler, and he's a state individual cross country champion. It just goes to show what hard work does. Uh, and that's the that's the one of the main messages that we have in our program is it can happen for anyone as long as you want and you're willing to work hard. And it's a, such a pleasure to be able to to talk about Dan and his accomplishments. He's a great great human being, and he's going to the University of Texas. Yes. Uh, next year as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yes. Maybe. Dan. Come on up. Daniel, thank you for your hard work. The accomplishments that you've had, as he said, since freshman year. Um, your your two mile pace is more like my one mile. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just absolutely astound me, and I know you have been an inspiration to many of my friends, kids that are also in the program. So thank you very much. You got to run one more cross country. Congratulations. Thanks for being the example. Coach Golden, one last question. How many of these young men are not seniors this year? Sounds great. Awesome. Wonderful. Awesome. Great, great. Okay. 
you guys can run along. If you... <laughs> <laughs> He's been dying. Yeah. 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 Did, did Coach run you up here? Or did y'all actually come in cars? <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, they got finals this weekend. Tomorrow. Right? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Well, started today. No, mm -hmm. we didn't even address the parents being here. Item 2D, citizen participation. Uh, Godfrey, do we have anybody signed up? Uh, yes, sir. No one has signed up. Very good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move item 8A up here, uh, uh, up in the in the ranking. Uh, naming of eight, not, Item 8A, naming of the principal for the Woodlands High School ninth grade campus, Dr. Stock. All right. Thank you very much. The excitement continues. Um, it's, as I've mentioned before, I take naming, recommending a principal to the board is a very, very serious part of my job. And I'm very pleased to uh, recommend to you someone tonight who I've probably known for 25 years. Um, so there's a little comfort in that when you know someone for a long period of time. Uh, Jill Malpass is currently assistant principal at the Woodlands High School and I'm recommending her to be the ninth grade campus principal. Do I have a motion? Mr. President, I move we approve. Second. And a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Congratulations, Jill. President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, uh, thank you so much for your vote of confidence. I am thrilled to be named the principal at the ninth grade campus, which is affectionately known as Cloud Nine. So I would also like to recognize a couple of folks who are here that have helped me all along the way, given me multiple leadership opportunities, and that would be Dr. Don Stockton and Mr. Greg Colson. So thank you. And then with me here tonight are a few members of my family. Marion Hauser, my husband. Jen Please Maddox, stand. my mother. <laughs> See you. <laughs> Megan Malpass, my daughter. I have three. One could be here. <laughs> Gary Maddox, my father. Thank you so much. Thank you for loaning her to, you know, for like 16 hours a day or whatever it is. We appreciate you very much. The good news is that the reason we moved that item up in the agenda is because we want her to be at work on time in the morning. <laughs> or Mr. Colson asked us, oh, anyway, <laughs> y'all are welcome to leave. You're welcome to stay. Congratulations as a family and, and, and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Okay, item three, uh, the consent agenda. I've heard no request to remove any items. So if there uh, aren't any requests at this point, I would uh, entertain a motion. Mr. So, President, I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item passes. Item 4A, consider approval of the guaranteed maximum price amendment for the new high school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone project, phase one project. Dr. Stock. Well, Mr. Foster, please come and present that item. President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your uh, consideration and approval tonight a guaranteed maximum price amendment for phase one of our new high school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone. And we're also asking you to uh, delegate the authority to the, the superintendent to negotiate and execute these contract documents. At our April board meeting, uh, Duratech was selected as a district's construction manager at risk for the new high school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone. This project's been divided into two phases, phase one being the site preparation for the clearing of the site and the construction of the building pad. The guaranteed maximum price for phase one is $2,413,211. The contract documents have been prepared and are being reviewed by our outside counsel and our external auditor. At this time, we request your approval. I have a motion. Motion. And do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? I have one. Certainly. How does this compare, to, since we're dividing the project a little bit differently, amending it, whatever you want to say, how does this uh, line up with the budget, the anticipated budget? 
Well, the, I mean, the, the purpose of dividing it is, is schedule driven. I mean, so with the opening date of August of 18 and starting in the winter uh, with the rainy season as we all are experiencing currently, we're trying to get a head start on the, on the messy uh, work where rain can really be a problem for us. When we look at the bigger picture, uh, we're still working through the design. Uh, we are within about 10% of our design budget goal. We've currently designed a building or drawn a building that includes input from all of our departments, has all of their wants and desires in the, in the, in the building. We're now going through the process of filtering through those wants and desires to actual needs so we can get the most efficient building for the, for the best value. Well, Part of that is looking at if saving us money actually cost us money long term. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a lot of value analysis over the next couple of months. We anticipate bringing you back a, uh, another the phase two GMP, which will be the remainder of this contract in, in the March for the March board meeting. So we've got a lot of work to do between now and then. Well, that, that was really, I mean, the things I'm numbers I'm hearing, if you're within 10%, you're doing quite well. So yeah, I, I appreciate you answering that. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion questions to add on to okay. that? I, I mean, the site prep is a site prep is a site prep, but what you're saying is that you're, you're kind of getting the site prep ready now. Cause that's, Fairly simple. I know that's not simple, but <laughs> simpler than building a, a big high school or yes. the underground. Uh, but giving you time to get that done while you're still kind of value sizing the high school appropriately. That, okay. That's exactly correct. Okay. As, as, and before the rains really right. hit. Yeah. Has, has to be done regardless. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much, Mr. Foster. Uh, item 2B, Capital Improvements Update. Dr. Stockton. Uh, Mr. Foster, please. <clears throat> All right, as I promised to you last month, this month we have some pictures of works you can see. Uh, the rain that I mentioned before has been a factor, uh, but our capital improvement we've currently got underway is a uh, locker room addition at the Woodlands High School. And as you can see, uh, work in the dirt is happening. This is areas where rain does have a, an actual effect on whether or not they can perform their services. At this time, the, uh, the, 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 drilled, the drilled deep foundations have already been installed. You're seeing pictures here of the, the crews working on the, the grade beam foundations that support the slab and the, and the building structure. Uh, the steel for the building is on its way. It, if it doesn't arrive this week, it will arrive first part of next week. Uh, rain is our chief uh, obstacle currently getting the concrete slab and grade beams and things like that poured. But the good news is, is as that happens, the other materials are arriving right on top of it. So there's not any lag in that construction. The project is currently uh, on schedule. Our intention is to turn it over for use uh, in the June time frame, so that our summer programs have full use of this, this particular facility. That's it. Mr. Foster, any questions? Very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Item 5A, consider approval of uh, Parameter uh, sale order of the series 2016 school bonds and refunding of bonds. Dr. Stockton. All right, I will call Mr. Rice up here, our current executive director of finance, our future chief financial officer. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Tonight we're recommending that the Board of Trustees approve the order authorizing the issuance of Conroe Independent School District unlimited tax school building and or refunding bonds, setting certain parameters for the bonds, authorizing the superintendent and chief financial officer to approve the amount, the interest rate, price, including the terms thereof, and certain other procedures and provisions related thereto. Uh, the approximate new issue is about $135 million. Uh, for the two th out of the 2015 bond referendum. The bond sale will, will provide funds for building a new high school and elementary in the Oak Ridge feeder zone, life cycle replacement projects, technology, land purchases, CTE and robotics projects. In addition, the district expects to issue approximately $25 million in refunding bonds. And at this time, we have uh, Mr. John Roebuck here. He is our financial advisor with BOSC. I know y'all are all familiar with him. And he has a presentation he'd like to do for y'all for the sale. Thank you, Darren. President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, John Roebuck, it's good to see you all this evening. Um, Darren, you did a great job of describing the project. But uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to go through the bond market as, as it is today. 
if you look on the far right, the current bond buyer index, which tracks uh, the national bond market, it's currently at a 3.65%. Uh, this presentation was actually done last week. It's actually gone down even further. It's at 3.57. And to kind of put that in perspective, that's 30 basis points or 0.30% above all-time lows. And it's uh, about 98 basis points or 0.98% uh, off of historical 15-year historical, 15 historical average. Excuse me. So we're in a great environment to sell bonds. I know the Fed is talking about raising rates tomorrow. Uh, the, we believe the market has a lot of that built in. But we've also put a little cushion on these. So the numbers we're going to give you tonight are, are accurate, but they're, they're a little cushioned. So when we come back to you in January, the results, uh, we, we meet the expectations of what we showed you tonight. Uh, as Darren pointed out, uh, we are looking to refund bonds. We're looking to refund a portion of the Series 20, 2006 bond series. Uh, we actually have picked off or refunded the new money portion of this bond series three other times before this. This is the first time we get to the refunding portion under tax law. So we have an opportunity to refund roughly $28 million in bonds and save potentially $4.1 million in savings for the district. And then here are the estimated debt service requirements. Uh, starting from left to right, you have your fiscal year starting in 16, and then your current total debt service requirements of the district uh, before we do this bond issue. Uh, less the debt service requirements and the refunding bonds, and then the principal interest on the proposed refunding issue. Uh, and then highlighted there in yellow is the savings we're, we're projecting, roughly $295,000 a year in savings. And then also the new money portion that generates about $135 million for the projects Mr. Rice talked about earlier, uh, those next two columns. And then the resulting debt service requirements on the far right. And then the tentative schedule of events. Um, you know, we're here December 15th. We've done a lot of work up to this point. Um, we've drafted the document. We've actually had rating calls and diligence calls with underwriters. And so really the, the next thing that's on the agenda for the schedule is to print the offering document for potential investors to review and make a decision if they want to buy the bonds. And then uh, the week of the 11th, January 11th, uh, we're going to sell the bonds. We actually have it tentatively scheduled for Thursday, January 14th, after talking to some underwriters. and They think that's a good day. Gives enough time for people to get back from the holidays, see where their capital positions are, and then invest in the district's bonds. And then close on February 15th, at which point uh, the district will receive the funds. Uh, Tom Sage with Anders Kurtz, your, your bond counsel is here. He's the one who actually drafted the parameter bond order we're asking you to approve tonight. I'm sure he'd be happy to answer any questions regarding the legal matters of that. But if you have any questions about the financial side, I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, do I hear a motion? I move we approve, Mr. President. Thank you. A second? Second. All right. Now, any discussion or questions of uh, either our bond counsel or our resident Financial experts. <laughs> I have a couple of questions. Now. Uh, we're not extending any maturities on any of the refunding bonds, no. so we're not going out any further than we would have if we had originally just paid them off. So no, sir, we're not. We, in fact, uh, for the PSF purpose, the permanent school fund guarantee, yes. the last sell these AAA, we're not allowed to extend the debt. So that's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Yes, sir. Sorry. Uh, and that is the next question was related to the rating. I assume. Well. AAA? Well, we'll sell them the AAA PSF. Right. Uh, we've actually had the rating calls. We we are hopeful, based on the calls, that we'll have an upgrade. So, okay. hopefully, we'll have news about that in the next couple of weeks. Okay. That was that, was, yeah. <laughs> that, that answers my questions. Thank you. Any other questions or, or uh, comments? Those are two important questions. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. Uh, I have a, a motion and a second. If no further discussion, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Motion passes. Uh, item 5B, uh, financial reports. Excuse me. John, uh, Tom, thank you for being here tonight, uh, and Merry Christmas to both you and your families, okay? Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Item 5B, financial reports. Dr. Stock. Uh, Mr. Rice, please. <coughs> Yes, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockman, I'm here to present the financial statements for the district for the month of November. These statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet for the month of November. November. Uh, the balance sheet includes our assets, liabilities, and various fund balances. 
we always like to look at our cash and investments. And in this chart, if we concentrate on the general fund, we'll see that we have $13,300 cash on hand in the general fund. We have bank deposits of $527,000. Invested in our pools is $51 million. Balance of our Capital One Now accounts, $42.6 million. Investments, less than one year, $27.5 million. And our longer term investments, greater than a year, $30,650,000. We'll look at our property tax collections. Property taxes are just now starting to come in. We'll see a lot. We'll see that really pick up December, January, February. We'll see the majority of our taxes come in. But as you can see, we're running just a little bit behind where we were last year. Uh, Six point two seven percent collected versus seven point one percent. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement uh, includes our revenues and expenditures. In the revenue section, it's broken down into three parts, local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. If we look at the detail of our local revenues, you can see property taxes are the largest generator in the general fund and debt service fund, uh, food sales and food service, and premium contributions and self-funded insurance. We can also look at our expenditures at the functional level, and once again in the general fund instruction is our highest category. Self-funded insurance. Once again, I'm happy to to uh, present to y'all a, a, a good month of November. Yay. We had total revenues of three million three hundred ninety-two thousand dollars. Total expenses three million one hundred forty-two thousand. For revenues over expenses of two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. Participation in our wellness centers remained strong. We had six hundred and seventy-seven visit our centers uh, in the month of November for a total of two thousand forty-four for the year. Investments, par value at the end of October is $217 million. At the end of November, we ended at $214 million. The wham of the pools in the Capital One is one day, as we know, yielding a little over 20, 21 basis points. The wham of our investments that are less than a year is 245 days, and we're yielding 54 basis points. The wham of our longer-term investments is 721 days, uh, yielding a full percent. The wham of our combined portfolio is 146 uh, days, and we're yielding almost 38 basis points. And the maturity wow. of our benchmark, which is a 90-day T-bill, went from just about zero to 18 basis points with the anticipation of the, the rate hike. Of the rate hike. So, yeah. And that is all I have. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. continuing education announcement. In accordance uh, with Chapter 61 of the Texas Administrative Code, I'm pleased to announce that all the members of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees have completed and or exceeded the state continuing education requirements for school board members. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> we passed. <laughs> we made a passing grade. Nine B overview of TASB local policy manual update 103. Dr. Stockton, and Mrs. Glass, please. Thank you, Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husbands, and members of the board. I know that that's what you spent Thanksgiving doing, reviewing update 103. It was fascinating, um, but I just want to highlight a few of the local policies for you. This is the first of two uh, post legislative updates that TASB will be issuing shortly, as you know, many of the laws take effect in January 1, and some of them took effect as soon as the session um, ended. Really, the highlights in this particular update are the conflict of interest uh, policies required both by federal regulations and by new state laws. And so that has impacted several um, board policies, and those have been updated to incorporate those requirements, really dealing with disclosing of conflicts of interest, accepting of gifts, um, and those types of things. And so that's the main, most important aspect of this um, update. If you have any questions about any others, I'd be happy to to answer them for you. Those are the important ones. Good question this evening. Thank you for that update. Review. 9C, consider level three grievance of employees Pamela Meyer, Robert Knightster, Lillian Hoover, and Patricia 
Hudnicht. Hudnicht. Sorry, I apologize. Dr. Stockton. I'll turn it over to Mrs. Glass. Thank you. This meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees is convened on December 15th, 2015. A quorum of the board is present, including the following members, Ms. Melanie Bush, Mr. Ray Sanders, Mr. John Husbands, Mr. Skeeter Hubert, and Ms. Jessica Powell. The purpose of this item on the board's agenda is to hear the consolidated complaint appeal of teachers Robert Neitzer, Pamela Meyer, Lillian Hoover, and Patricia Gutnick. In accordance with local board policy, DGBA, the hearing is being recorded. Mr. Neitzer, Ms. Meyer, Ms. Hoover, and Ms. Gutnick all allege the district has treated them inequitably by paying them for working 187 days when other teachers in similar positions have been paid for working 193 or 202 days. Because this complaint is against the district's administration, under Texas Government Code Section 551074, this meeting will be held in closed session. The board may also obtain legal advice from its attorney during the meeting in accordance with Texas Government Code Section 551.071. Therefore, at this time, the meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees is adjourned to executive session under Government Code Section 551074 and 551071 of the Open Meetings Act. Everyone not associated with the hearing should now leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. The time is now 6.47 p.m. The board is now reconvened in open session. The time is now 8.01. Uh, the boardroom doors have been opened and anyone want, waiting outside has been allowed to return. The board can now make a decision on the issue before it. The board can grant the complainants their requested relief, deny the complaint, dismiss the complaint, or any other form of relief the board chooses to award. Is there a motion? I hear a motion. Mr. President, I move that the district dismiss the complainants' grievances collectively due to their knowledge that they did not timely file their grievances based on the July 2nd, 2015 email from Dr. Null stating no changes would be made in accordance with the, in accordance with the policy DGBA and the board consider this matter closed second all in favor please raise your hand all opposed same sign the board has ruled and we will send written correspondence confirming the board's decision the hearing is now concluded Very good I would entertain a motion of having no further business a motion for so moved. second and we stand adjourned